Testing. Welcome to the Big Bacon Theory of Image and Marketing presentation. We are Exploding Bacon, winners of the World Championship Cayman Family Imagery Award. My name is Landon. I'm the outreach lead on the team. I'm also the scouting and strategy lead, and I work in the mechanical sub team. And I have four presenters also here with me today, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm a junior. I'm on the mechanical sub team. I'm the imagery lead and the co summer camp lead. Hello, I am Michaela. I am uh, also a junior on the team. I'm a part of electrical sub team, and I am first like a girl co lead. Hi, I'm Elise, and I'm a junior, and I'm part of the electrical sub team. Hi, I'm Zach. I'm a junior, and I'm a part of the electrical and mechanical sub teams. After this presentation, there'll be time for question and answers, but if we can't reach you, feel free to reach us right outside the door or through our website, explodingbacon.com. Um, also, uh, if you guys would all pull out your phones right now and tweet that you are here at the Big Bacon Theory of Image and Marketing using hashtag oink oink boom, that'd also be appreciated. So this is what we're gonna be going over today. Uh, first, we're going to start off with how to brand within your team and then how to apply to all aspects of your team. So why is it important? Why is your image important? First, it's important to know who you are before others know who you are. A clear, an image is nothing if not clear and concise. It's important to have that so your, tar so your target audience knows you. A clear identity will help you market to sponsors, teams, and judges, and your whole community. <laughs> and, and yeah, there. Um, so why are you here? To develop a new team brand, update your existing brand, learn how to document your brand, or rebrand your whole team's identity. No matter what step of the team branding process you're on, this presentation will help you. So let's get started. Imagery is about more than your colors and logo. It's about everything you do. Your image should reflect your team. Some teams are wild and crazy. Others are very professional. Some teams are from schools. Some teams are from 4-H programs or Boy Scout and Girl Scout teams. A team image is about embracing who you are and presenting that consistently in everything you do. Even a small change can give you a better sense of who you are and who you're trying to be. A mission statement is a great place to start. It is important to set aside some time to have a conversation with your team um, about your team's identity. So we have a strategic planning meeting every summer where we go over things in that year that worked and didn't work. Our first year, we just brainstormed ways to improve all aspects of the team. This is an example of a strategic planning worksheet um, there are more resources available on our website online and many, many other resources online in general. Research some t techniques and don't try to get it all done in a couple of hours. Success is about learning and adapting. Ask questions, talk about what's working for you and what's not, and look at interesting things others are doing. You can collect examples from other teams' websites or even the company that has your favorite logo. Overall, be patient. Their brand wasn't built in a day, and neither will yours. Identify your audience or identify your audience or communities. Map them out. Who do you serve? Whose attention are you trying to reach? At the very beginning, we learned that a critical element of the first team was the team shirt. We thought we were being creative and clever by having a different shirt for each day of competition. But by Saturday, no one knew who we were. Regionals, and especially worlds, are incredibly busy times. You need to make sure that other teams, judges, or visiting friends can easily identify your team. So let's talk a little bit about your brand. The main components of your brand are your team's logo, tagline, and an, a short team message that we call an elevator speech. An elevator speech is a couple of sentences that sums up your team, and it can be said in about the time it takes to ride an elevator. Once you develop these components and reach out to your team and encourage um, everyone to give input, then um, you might find someone who is very skilled at drawing or any other things like that. Um, is impor the important thing is to let your personality shine throughout your brand. Um, now we're going to play a Kahoot to show how effective some of these logos are. Um, 
so I don't know. So yeah. And if you don't know what Kahoot is, you can f download the app or you can just go through Google, Chrome, or any like internet source to search it up. Type in this pin. I don't know about some of these names. <laughs> I mean, what is high? Raise, raise your hand if you named yourself high. Who is that one guy? <laughs> I do enjoy that one team. They're, they're really good. Or laser two? <laughs> Come on, it's got to be a laser two. All right, you guys got 15 seconds to join. <laughs> We're going to start this. After. Come on, zero. <laughs> or Kate. Hmm. Such peculiar names. So I see beginning, but where's the uh, end? Nine, eight, this is, this is seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Yeah. I think this is the most amount of people I've seen in a Kahoot game at once. Question number one. From their websites to their robot, this team is sleek, blue, and white. <laughs> there we go, the cheesy poofs. It was not Robonauts. <laughs> wow. That leaderboard's really close so Hi. far. Nice one. Two, four, six, eight. What is the name of this Texas team? Oh. oh. It's fine. We're fine. Making sure to see if you can memorize the numbers without the look. Dude. Yep. Team appreciate. Try keeping the lead. I think the rest of the leaderboard changed, but this Kai's foreign open. team incorporates their home into their logo. Come on. One second. Thunder down Ooh. under. I think this is the best one so far. Wow. Oh. And there oh. goes Kai. Our new leader. Can we get 100% right, though? Spam I from Florida begins, brings these for their alliance members to wear during events. Okay, this is the one. Come on, guys. I believe in you. 
What do they wear? Yeah. yeah. So at least a lot of us know Spam. Oh, Kai's back on the leaderboard. This Hall of Fame team has one of the most recognizable logos in FRC. I don't know. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, Kai's climbing back on up. This stinky team's logo changes with the game, but always remains recognizable. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing the animal would be helpful for the answer. Wow, that's impressive. Oh, Kai moving back up even further. <laughs> this Michigan team give out, gives out antenna at their competitions. Usually we would be giving out candy to the winners, but I've been told I'm not allowed to throw candy anymore after hitting people at our last regional with some candy. We had to get them to wear safety glasses. This silly team wears fuzzy ears and pink hard hats. Wow, that one tricked a few people out there. Wow, Kai is almost back in the lead. Good luck trying to find a color of the rainbow not on this team's shirt. This team's handmade game-themed pins are always a hot commodity. I like this team. Please get this right. I want to see 100% on this one. Come on, guys. Come on. If we on. don't get 100%, I'm going to be a little disappointed. Wonder who this is. Yeah. So Floating close. pork? They sound like some Walmart knockoffs over there. I feel like you're like foreshadowing. This something. team always sticks to their recognizable color palette. Based out of Houston. This colorful team has a cunning disguise as part of their logo. Take note of the word cunning. It's a negative notation? Notation? Yeah, we got it right. Something like that. Oh, got some people tricked out there. Let's see how the leaderboard's looking. Oh. I can't seem to find this team. Let's try to aim for 100 for this one. This is the one I'm feeling it. Oh, so close. 
want to move up. He's gonna, if you want to. This team incorporates their main sponsor into their logo. Oh. Maybe this one's 100%? Wow. One of these days. One of these days. We will. Failing hope, Sam. Ah, space cookies. Okay, last one. This team uses their Texan roots to wrangle the competition. Robo Wranglers. Wow. That was the winner, third place, Lee, 3,628. Second place, Dagny, 3,928. And in first place, Aiden. Can we get, can we get Aiden to 4157 to stand up? 459. 4159 stand up. Yeah! yeah. Great job, everyone. Good job. Next slide. All right. Okay. Once you know who you are, you want to document it. Here's an example of an image inventory. Some things you should include are the maximum and minimum size of your logo, how to use it on dark backgrounds, what colors get inverted or not, and the do's and don'ts necessary to remain consistent year to year. Once, the, uh, once you decide on these details, they should be saved in a place where it can be easily accessed by all team members, even if leadership changes. Some, some great team examples are 1868, the Space Cookies, 254, the Cheesy Poofs, and 4118, Roaring Riptide, which have great branding documentation on their websites. You should be also be familiar with how to use the first branding guidelines. Um, you, should be, you should be able to use their logo and branding elements properly, and they give a um, very detailed description of how to, um, how to integrate it uh, with game elements year to year. Once you've developed your brand, it's time to utilize that branding to market your team and build relationships. Your newfound image should be reflected in everything you create. Remember, your image is important. It helps you to stay recognized and remembered by your community. Your image helps your community know who you are. It helps them to recognize you at outreach events or demos. So your target audience can be broken. <laughs> your target audience can be broken down into two main categories: within first and outside of first. We're going to start within first and break that down a little further into the judges, other first teams, and the first community at large. For judges, it's important to for judges, it's important to have a judge packet that you can bring out and show them specific key details on the fly. This helps you take control of your message. Students can take it out and point out a few key highlights that the judge is more specifically interested in. Robot tech binders are also helpful for robot, um, robot judges. This way they can remember your key strengths later on. It is important to have every member of your team trained to talk to judges, especially if they're going to be in the pits. Some teams even have their um, students pass pit tests to be eligible for shifts within the pit. Some ways that you can help reinforce this knowledge is with fun games like um, Kahoot and have your chairman's team pre present in front of everyone so everyone knows and they're on the same page. But no matter what works best for your team, always practice, practice, practice. So being memorable to other teams can benefit your, your team in many different ways, especially during alliance selections. 
Luckily, there are many tools you can use to spread your image and uh, to other teams and help them remember you. Robot cards can provide a other teams with a quick takeaway of the key strengths of your robot design, strategy, and programming. And a picture for the pit scouters coming by. Creating buttons to share is another great way to market to teams. You'll know you've achieved successful marketing when they can easily pick you out of a crowd. Showing your enthusiasm in the stands with a contagious spirit will give your team greater visibility. Oink, oink. Developing a cheer is a great way to connect with others, and they're fun to learn to cheer on other teams. Mascots can help spread awareness of your team in a fun and memorable way throughout events, as well as cater to a younger audience and being generally more approachable. Many people take pictures with mascots and post them online, and that can help spread your image. Your pit is an extension of your team's image. Is yours easily identifiable? Regionals and especially worlds are incredibly busy times and you want to make sure that judges, your sponsors, or other teams can easily locate you. Your robot is key to your team's image at competition. Bright colors stick out on the field and also attracts an audience at demonstrations. Um, the pink team has pink robot and that's easy to match to it. So, embrace your image. As you know, ours has something to do with pigs. You will know you have successfully marketed your um, image when others embrace it. Team 1523 Mars gives out giant green inflatable Martians at competitions, and they're really fun and recognizable, and you can see them across the stands. So um, it's important to have something that's recognizable and, and um, just good, easy to look at and like recognizable. Anyway. Um, it's also good to have giveaways, fun giveaways that help spread your image past your team's boundaries. And um, it's good to find unique uh, giveaways for your team specifically. So. Moving on to marketing outside of FIRST, there can be many benefits in going into your community. Having a good image is key to becoming a recognized and remembered part of your community. Your image attracts potential sponsors, future students, and helps you to build more connections. And more connections always means more opportunities to professionally represent your team. Having a mascot like Wilbur is a great way to greet your community in a fun and engaging way. It also enhances your reputation but make sure that whenever someone is in your team shirts that they are always representing, they are representing your entire team and they must make sure to uphold your team's values. Now you have done the work. It's time to get the word out. Make sure to send to local and major news outlets, but also send pictures. They know that their audience will be more engaged seeing that picture of your team winning that award than just reading about it, just like your social media audiences. Now, marketing to potential sponsors means being prepared. Have a marketing packet with pictures of your team and robot. At the very least, have business cards to exchange. People are very busy and you want to be able to follow up on those leads. There are also some fun ways to enforce your image within your sponsor levels, as you can see, like we do here. So, getting that new sponsor is great. Keeping them is the next step. Keep your sponsors up to date with your accomplishments. Invite them out to your space. Thank them publicly and often. We send out emails, thank our sponsors on social media, and tag them, and host a sponsor dinner where we highlight our season's triumphs, let them drive the robot and share the important role they played in our success. Speaking of social media, this is the global voice of your team and it can be a very fun way to engage new audiences. Identify your audiences and then choose the social media platforms that work best to help spread your message to those people. Create goals and objectives for each platform and make a plan to do them well. 
you may want to assign individuals to create content. This could be a student or a mentor, or you could even make a social media subteam within your team. Studies show that posts with images and videos are more engaging than just words. Research the best ways to succeed in the platforms you decide to tackle. There are so many recommendations on, in numerous articles for the posting frequency and approach for whatever you choose. For each site, create banners and badges that reflect your team's image, colors, logos, a robot, or smiling faces. Make sure you stick with your predefined image. Once you create your social media, stay active. Post about events you volunteer and compete at and post frequently. You can schedule posts which can help you post consistently. Another way to stay active is by liking and commenting on other teams' posts in order to like build relationships with them. Um, don't be afraid to start a conversation. Um, you need to remember that spelling and grammar matter. Improper spelling and grammar can reflect poorly on your team. You want to make sure that your social media lead or whoever you have doing those accounts has experience with these platforms and is committed to their role. Um, you want to have your teammates uh, follow you and share it. This can help you gain followers and that reaches a broader audience. Um, Trends are consistently changing on social media, so try and get involved with them, but don't stretch yourself too thin. Um, all in all, do what works best for your team and experiment. Um, they say a picture is worth a thousand words and a video is 24 pictures per second and can get a point across very easily. In your videos, you want to be short and to the point, and you want to include all of your team's information in the videos you make. That way, it can be easily tracked back to you. Your image extends beyond the boundaries of competitions, and it should be upheld with the same awareness year-round. The Online First community offers lots of chances to make connections with teams, outreaches, and it gives opportunities with demos, with first, and um, conferences and events. And every post on, on um, Chief Delphi, social media, um, first Discord, and subreddits are saying stuff about your team. So as a team member, you're responsible for um, posting appropriately on those, on those platforms. Um, a clear identity helps members represent you and first online. The goal of any program is to make an impact. The goal of any program is to make an impact. And, you can, and it's, you're able to best do so if you have a strong image and can stay recognizable. You may already have s something good, but making a small tweak can help you to make a much larger impact. For example, hashtag first like a girl, a program that restarted back in 2016, has its own branding guidelines and logo separate from that of Exploding Bacons. If you look at the logo, you can see that we, choo we chose to capitalize certain letters, and we have two different fonts, which, which helps this logo to stand out more and be creative. These are some of the things that we decided to keep consistent with every representation of hashtag first like a girl. So to recap, how does your image benefit you? It helps you to become more memorable, communicate your message, attract sponsors, recruit future students, create connections, and leave a good, lasting impression. Now that you've established your program, you need to make sure that you uphold your image, your image in everything you do. And don't forget that gracious professionalism should be a part of every program. Thank you guys all for coming, and we have a question and answer portion. But after that, we would appreciate it if you guys could go on our website and take the survey at the bottom of our website about our Big Bacon presentation and tell us how you think we did, anything we could change, or anything you would like to let us know that how we can help other teams for the future. Thank you. Um, we, oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, do you guys utilize TikTok into your marketing? And if so, what type of content do you guys do? So currently we do not use TikTok, but we have been thinking about 
utilizing it and some of the ideas we've had for the future are making more comedic style of prompts, things that encourage first and our team, but in a funny way. Whereas um, within social media programs, like you'll find specific things take to Instagram, specific things take to Twitter, and it, some of them are more serious, some are more comedic, and, and yeah. So it depends on each program that we're looking at. Um, for first, like a girl, where we have uh, we have Discord server, we have forums, we have all that stuff. Uh, usually, we are trying to keep posts up every sometimes two, uh, two weeks or so for uh, first, like a girl. But it really varies per program. And so for our team um, on our YouTube, for example, I think during season we try to keep posts out there for about once a month on our, you know, our uh, robot demonstrations or like how the season's going. And so it really depends on what social media platforms you're looking for and what type of impact you're trying uh, to make for your program. A lot, a lot of um, stuff with that also has to do with um, not trial and error, but seeing what other people have done and using um, kind of how they did it to help you. Um, and that just helps you format it a little bit better knowing kind of seeing something else and how to use it off of that. Um, something else to keep in mind is the more you post, uh, like for example, when we were trying to get first like a girl off the ground, post often. The more you post for a new program or one you're trying to get out there and continued, it's beneficial to have uh, you know deadlines like, okay, we're gonna post Tuesday and Thursdays and we're gonna do this different idea and this idea and see which one sticks and continue with that for the future. Should I pass some of my community projects to other team across the seas, across the country? So one thing is uh, always working with other first teams is a great way to branch out further into the first community. Uh, if you're a foreign team, for example, uh, reaching out to teams in other countries, say the United States, could be a great way to help spread your message further. And by collaborating with the first team, you could help take maybe your social media platforms to like the uh, American social media um, platforms or um, being able to spread your program further through um, the United States or other countries or like that. It's definitely always great to help spread your message to other first teams and all first teams are willing to help. Let's say I have limited resources. Where would you say I should focus my efforts as far as imagery and marketing and like trying to get our image out there? Um, so if you have limited resources and you can't do everything, um, I would say try hitting on the key points like your robot and um, just when you're seen in the community like shirts and that. Um, and then from there you can work down smaller um, because it's kind of overall to specific, right? Um, having presentations and stuff marketed to how you are kind of like this is something that you can work on later once you've established who you are and other people know who you are. So, yeah. So is this just for your team in general or a program in your team? So um, we talked to another team about this where their school was regulating what they could and couldn't say. And I don't know if that's uh, the case, but a good way to get out there in your school is posting, um, if, if your school has a newsletter or a yearbook program or anything like that, talking to them, explaining, hey, this is FIRST, this is our robotics team, we went to this event, we went to Worlds, we did this, and try to post there and, and spread your, your message there first. Um, and if you can't do that, um, post on, pick a social media platform and post regularly about it. So one of the things that we do is we do a lot of outreaches and that's just volunteer work. And if you, we get a lot of like, um, 
people following us on Instagram, people know who we are through those outreaches. So if you get your team volunteering places, that really helps as well. Yeah, and always wearing your shirts at um, your volunteer events always help them know who you are, help you to stay recognized. And uh, what we do at a lot of these events is we take down people's emails and then we ask them a circle like what they might be interested. So say uh, they want to be interested in our uh, summer camp. Um, ages 8 to 12, so we ask them to circle that and then we can send them an email about that and that can bring them back uh, further from just seeing us one time to now being able to become part of our community. Yeah, go. So, um, you guys talked a little bit about like kind of jumping on trends without being too very like specific or doing it too often because obviously like trends can turn into fads. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering how your team kind of handles keeping your image ex like exclusive to your own team and consistent with also branching out like how, like how you said not changing like the shirts too often or, or kind of like that while still having some sort of like relatability to the different trends that are happening. So I think one thing um, moving into like modern as like keeping our, our logo modern is we don't make changes too often. What we'll do is we always have like um, a business meeting each, like we always have business meetings each month, but we have a strategy, a business strategic meeting uh, each year to go over what changes we might need to make uh, to all our programs, say, say logos, and, but we always make sure that we have documented our previous stuff. So we don't change our logos too much so that they're still recognizable and then they may be updated to modern colors, trends, ideas, and um, looking at all our social media pages, looking at how we can change um, maybe some of our taglines or slogans that we are using to convey those messages further and allowing those to say more about our program uh, and allowing every aspect of what we're doing to stay up to date. Yeah. Okay, oh. sorry, real quick. Um, Something we do a lot is we more um, keep our like image the same, but our how we'll post on social media will change depending on those trends. More or less, uh, unless it's like very important, we'll have the same kind of guidelines. Somewhere you could explore doing that again would probably be TikTok. It sounds like you guys focus a lot more on programs compared to individual different social media platforms as well as different avenues of branding and marketing. How many said programs do you run per year and like what um, links do they go to? Or like, like how big do you like expand? So for each sub program, it kind of depends on um, how much we expand it. So with our program like Spark, um, it's easier to spread all over the world because it, the, yeah, the, the way that's set up, it's just people can bring it with them and instantly there. Whereas some other programs, it's harder and you have to um, market it like a lot and. So Spark um, is a program we have to give little, little kits of uh, a car and some recyclable materials to other countries and third world countries so they can experience STEM. So we have five or six main programs that our team runs, I want to say, Summer Camp, First Like a Girl, Spark, some other things. And then we also have team, uh, like team programs, like we have a spirit sub team just for our own team to do fun activities with each other. We have a Hall of Fame sub team to make sure everyone's in the loop on Hall of Fame and do, do presentations for that. For those main programs, we advertise them on all social medias we can. Like, first like a girl, we've advertised on Instagram, Twitter, all over the place. Um, so as we were saying earlier, there's uh, like a difference between a pr um, something as a part of our team and something uh, we've created from our team as a program. And so w with my example of First Like a Girl, First Like a Girl is now its own program and that we associate our team with that, but it's, it has its own social media platforms. And for some of your programs, maybe when they get large enough or when um, if you want it to be its own thing that's more kind of separate from your team, Maybe creating your own social media for that, your own websites for that type of thing is a really good way to get it out there separate from your team. But at the same time, we're also a very large team of more 35 students this year. So we have um, the resources and students that um, to have these teams to make sure that we're always uh, keeping up to date on these programs, posting about them, and uh, leading our sub teams. With that, it's really important to um, kind of separate 
your different programs unless it is like you, right? Unless it is your team almost. So like for first like a girl, it's gonna have a different um, environment around it than just bacon. Uh, same with Spark and same with everything else. So making sure that it's still traced back to you, but it's um, still its own little, not bubble, but like mood almost. So the elevator pitch that you guys mentioned, what do you think are the most important things to include in that? Because it's a lot to summarize in a small amount of time. So we have a, kind of three main elevator speeches that we tell each of our team members to have. One of them is for yourself, who you are, your age, your experience within FIRST, what the STEM community means to you. One is for your team how it was started, how many members are on it, what it is, like, you know, we're an FRC, FIRST Robotics team. And the third is about FIRST. What is FIRST? Who created FIRST? What do you do for FIRST? What is the, the game for FIRST? Um, and those are just a couple general, you can add more if you have more time, different things like that. Scholarships within FIRST. But yeah, so our elevator speeches, and it really depends on who you're talking to. Say. Um, you're talking to like a business judge. You may want to talk more about uh, what your team's programs are. So like you're, you could have a elevator speech about your team's programs, just maybe a one minute long thing about, hey, this is one of the programs we do. This is another one. This is what we've done this year for that program. And this is how this program's expanded this year. Um, and it really depends on your audience. Say you're talking to another parent. You might want to talk more about um, your experience within FIRST. Uh, and so it really depends on who you're talking to and who you're trying to convey your message to. There, I, like, there's a lot of different elevator, elevator speeches that we just kind of threw out there. Um, and obviously, we don't just kind of sit down and write down like, OK, we can use elevator speech for this, 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 this. That would be a lot, and then just a lot to memorize. So um, we, we memorize the main three um, individually, like we come up with our own and stuff. And then we play games and different stuff to have knowledge about everything. Like one game, we pass a ball around. And when you land on it, you have to say a fact about something about that game, right? Like sometimes it can be bacon facts. Sometimes it can be first facts, all of that stuff. That way, um, you can say your knowledge and other people can hear it. So if someone's like, hey, what's Spark? You'll be like, oh, we played that game once. I know what this is. And then you can kind of just say it. So that's helpful instead of just memorizing like a list of stuff. And it's more fun that way. Um, you guys mentioned you have a judges binder. Could you talk more about what you put in it and how you decide what to do with that? Um, y yeah, so um, here, can you hold that? So in our judges binder, we can pass this around afterwards um, quickly, but we have a bunch of like different sections just thinking about like what's most important to us, right? So um, all our programs, little pages about that, um, like first like a girl. I'm not gonna go into, a, sure. like yeah, we'll just pass it around because it's yeah, easier. Um, it yeah, so once she's done with it, we'll pass it around to whoever wants it next. If you yeah. didn't hear what she just said, there's a digital version on our website, yeah. ExplodingBacon, ExplodingBacon.com. <laughs> so I have uh, two follow-up questions. Number one, how would you recommend getting in contact with sponsors? And then number two, when you are talking to sponsors, how do you recommend conveying your message to them? What's like an attractive message that you would give to sponsors? So when we go to outreach events, um, a lot of them can be, some are for you know, our community and what we're talking to, maybe students. Um, the other ones we go to are a kind of professional conferences. And at these conferences, not only do we run a booth where people can come up to us, but we usually send out a team of students to go around and experience all the other booths there. So what we're doing is we're going around and um, making connections. We're talking to all the people there. And what we're trying to do is just get them interested in what FIRST is. And if they really seem interested, maybe we'll get their email and we can send them our sponsor packet so that uh, if they would like to donate, they. We can love to make sure that we get they are able to get into contact with us. A lot of sponsors are also like um, personal stuff. So like, you know, 
friends and family if they're connected to businesses and stuff and also grants grants are like a huge thing with it there's tons of grants online for first and just like general stuff so looking that up and applying for as many as you realistically can that helps with that and um also some companies have stuff where if you like volunteer with them then you get some money in return and stuff